He's executive head chef at one of Beijing's leading hotels. And Australia, he's planning a unique collaboration with a local Chinese chef. Stay with My China for the story of Robert Cunningham and his very special duck dinner. The man posing for a magazine cover is Robert Cunningham. Hailing from Australia for the past years, he's been working at the East Hotel, Beijing. The working day begins for him with overseeing breakfast for the hotel's guests. With breakfast over, he chairs the regular daily briefing for the chefs from the hotel's restaurants. We have a daily meeting with the chefs to communicate what is going on in the day. We also just, just quickly for normally 15, 20 minutes to discuss situations for that day and for that week that we need today. So this is a very important thing. Before the preparation for lunch begin, there's time for Robert to give the chefs some training. Having started learning to cook at the age of 15, he's clocked up over 30 years of experience as a chef. I grew up on a farm in country Victoria in Australia. From a young age I had an interest in food because we were growing our own vegetables and growing our own pigs, sheep and cattle and killing and making our own uh, sausages and small goods. So from a young age I really started to be more interested in cooking. This is definitely what I want to do. His culinary career has taken him all over the world, from Melbourne and Sydney in his native Australia, to the UK, Japan and elsewhere. In 2009, he arrived in China, and in 2011, moved to the East Hotel, in anticipation of its opening the following year. As executive chef, He's responsible for a staff of almost 50, operating the hotel's two rest banqueting halls, coffee house and bar. Okay. Good. Definitely need the kick by the cucumber. Got a good balance, a little bit of um, acid, but not too sweet. It's good. Okay. Calamari is good. Has it tentacles? And uh, you like it? Uh, Chef,我经常培训我们一些他的拿手菜。我跟他学到了很多新的菜品。我觉得他在用一些我们当地的食材啊，然后根据我们结合中国的来，他来到中国结合中国的口味去做一些菜，像这个鱿鱼，他用到
That egg is too raw. Okay. Okay, those eggs are too raw. Make sure they're not that raw. Look. Yeah. What's the soup today? Tomato. Uh, no. Uh, we had bell pepper. Okay.我在跟他在一块工作六年了就这个菜的这个品质啊然后要求是比较高的有一次啊有一个台是六个人的餐有一个菜没有做好然后剩下那五个人的菜都已经摆在摆在盘子上了其实就一个小的装饰没有做好他
The idea of the Carnivores Club is created to lift people's awareness about utilising the whole animal. Whenever I pick the chef, we always work with uh, a product that they're kind of famous for or that they comes from their country because this time we want to do duck. So we want a chef who has a duck restaurant and who cooks with duck. Li Dong, we decided to do duck, so we pick him to be the chef. The main focus today is when we're discussing, we use the whole duck. So we use the tongue, we use some liver, we use the heart, we use the blood, we use the leg, we use the breast, making people aware to eat the whole animal. Robert做这个创意好像关于肉食的这个俱乐部，我不是第一期，他已经合作了很多的知名的大厨。每一次都很成功这个就是我们俩之前谈的一个难点之一Robert is relishing the chance to hone the Chinese culinary skills he has learned over the past years. Already adept at preparing the famous egg treasure duck, he's planning to create a brand new dish, which he's calling egg treasure duck neck sausage. He'll be using steamed duck's neck and stuffing it with chestnuts, ham, scallops, and mushrooms. And so he begins... So yeah, we'll do that. So in a minute I'll burn the duck and we'll stuff the duck neck with this. So we're kind of like using uh, some of the traditional um, spices and flavorings but also adding a little bit of have difference with it and using some pork mince instead of like the rice that they normally use. Um, yeah, we'll see how it comes up. I think it should come up quite nice. Now just mixing the ingredients together in the pork mince and then this will go in the duck neck. This is going to be the sausage. Okay, I'll just leave that for a minute. Burning the, taking the duck neck off from the bone. This is a, the duck neck, but we, we just boned it. So we turn it into, we'll turn it into a sausage in a minute. So that's the duck neck sausage, steamed. You can see that's cooked and nice and moist. Looks good. To work as a chef, you have to have like commitment because you work long hours. It's not sociably acceptable, you know, like so normally you miss out on things in life, weddings, parties, celebration, funerals like you're working like most of the time so actually you miss out on a lot of things that other people would have a social interaction you maybe start early in the morning you go home quite late at night so you need commitment you need focus uh, you need to be a strong willed person because you have to work for many years before you get to be a head chef
With the day of the carnivores club meeting imminent, the two chefs meet to finalize their preparations. So mega, mega, mega shell duck. Yeah, They start with the first course, the tasting plate. Before we talked about the menu, as you know, and then now it's the first time that we cook together and make sure the menu is right. So, for example, we changed a couple of things on here, like I added a bit more mustard sauce and dressing. I added the salad to the duck neck. Um, before we talk about serving this a bit separate, but now we're just going to put a little bit of the sauce and the, the duck uh, breast, the tea smoked duck breast. We just finish it with the sauce now. And the duck tongue, we decided to serve cold instead of hot. So we changed that. And so it's bingda instead of uh, rhoda. Cool, but we're pretty happy with that. The soup we made a little bit smaller because it's too big. It's pretty heavy and too rich. And you can see it's got the... It has the blood, the congealed blood, some little bit of rice noodle, some heart and some giblets, and some liver of the duck. And now we're going to finish the dessert. Oh? Oh? Oh, Okay, cool. I think the most the is the most exciting thing to do with the dish. It's a very exciting thing to do with the dish. Because I think 对于我来说，我都会很积极的。所以说，这是我跟他最愉快的合作的原因之一。还好，OK，怎么样？非常好，很酷呀，非常棒，很漂亮，那个，嗯，这个，很多种，很多种。To handle such a heavy workload, Robert believes it's important to keep in good shape. I like running because I like to find a little nice release. You know, a lot of people have hobbies and things I like to do, and running is one of the things that I like to do. I like to get out there and run. You can do it by yourself. You don't need anything to do it. You just need some time, and you can do it by yourself. And if it's a bad day, pollution day, then I always run here in the, in the gym at East. And I like the challenge of the long distance running, like the half marathon or the marathon, because it's a physical and a mental challenge. It's quite fun to do as well. From the beginning till till the end, which as we said, it was uh, it was great.
The day of the Carnivores Club lunch has finally arrived. Chefs Robert Cunningham and Lee Dong are about to present their novel duck creations. The first course is the tasting plate. The two chefs are pleased with the trial dishes they made the day before. They've also formed an understanding in the kitchen so that they are confident about the food they're preparing as well as about working well together. After the previous day's tasting, Li Dong has decided the soup needs additional pepper to make the flavor more intense. Once the soup has been served, Robert can begin work on the main course, duck's leg, cooked twice to make it crispy. I like the dog leg, was was very, very good, very tasty, very tender, it was beautiful, yeah, very good. Even the dessert is a brand new co-creation by the two chefs. From the beginning till till the end with the dessert, it was uh, it was great. The last course, the dessert, is a bit of a play that we did together. It's a play on Li Dong's um, uh, mango and sago pudding that he served at Jia Tang. But then I just changed a little bit, adding the coconut panna cotta, the raspberry sorbet, and a little bit of meringue. Thank Guys, you. thank you. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you. Some new Chinese dishes that I haven't done before. So the duck tongue. Uh, the cold duck tongue dish, I've not done that before, so we learned how to do that. And also uh, Li Dong's uh, tea smoked duck breast, so we learned a couple of different things. Also, we played around with that duck neck sausage with Chinese flavors. We never made that before, so we, we did some things that we don't normally do. All these dishes are kind of new, so fun and uh, something exciting, you know, and different uh, to cook with. So that we can take away for the future and develop my Chinese cooking style and work on that a lot more. So I think we can utilize that in, in our, uh, our menus a bit more often and especially for special events. I think pretty good. We're pretty happy with that. It's fun. With the all duck banquet declared by the guests a resounding success, Robert can return home with a light heart. This evening is a rare chance for his family to enjoy his cooking. Robert and his family live in the San Lituan area of Beijing, not far from the East Hotel. His wife works for an American company in China. Robert's mother is also here, visiting from Australia. Hey. Hello, there. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. 
How's your day? Not bad. Yours? Good. Hi, Mum. How you going? Oh, good. How was your day? Not too bad. How's yours? What did the doctor say? Really good. All clear. All clear. Good. I'm allowed to fly. Oh, cool. <laughs> yes. That's good. So we'll see what the travel agent comes up with okay. for next week. Mm, but this is my second time in Beijing. I feel very comfortable um, walking the street with my grandchildren. It's really nice to be, feel so comfortable when you're in another country and in another city. Rob taken me to the restaurants where he works. Very, very nice. I just think it's a wonderful life that they're living at the moment. Yeah. Hey, Dad. Yes, Sachi. Hi, Dad. How are you going, mate? Good. Hey. How's tutoring? Okay. Okay. Robert's daughter, Sachi, and his son, Taj, both go to school yeah, in Beijing. Hello, your homework at the tutors. Um, All right, put it slow down. Just keep your body up straight. Don't just pretend. Robert naturally hopes his children will enjoy cooking as much as he does. So he's happy to let them join him in the kitchen, despite the occasional mishap. When I was really small, and I was like really, really short, and then there was some chili on the table, and then I just grabbed it, and then I just dropped it, and then I rubbed my eyes, and then my eyes were in chili, and my dad was really freaked out. He's like, we're going to go to the hospital. Crazy. I do think that food is a big part of our family culture. The kids just love spending time with Rob in the kitchen, but sometimes it really freaks me out because uh, since they were really small, Rob has been allowing them to, to use a knife. So they've been using knives for a long time and sometimes it, when I'm watching I'm like, oh please don't cut yourself and both of them have actually cut themselves in some little small scratches. But Rob tries to teach them to do it the right way. So it's as safe as it can possibly be, but still it's hard for a mother to watch. Having lived in Beijing for so long, it's natural that this Australian family has adopted some aspects of the Chinese lifestyle. Dinners are often simple Chinese food, eaten, of course, with chopsticks. For Robert, the family dinner is a happy way to end another busy day. It's been seven years now in Beijing. I think Beijing is a very interesting city. It's the capital of China. It has a, the historic point of view about it. As everybody knows, the last few years in China has been quite rapid growth rates. So people have tended to be able to move quite quickly. So I've been quite lucky. I went to an executive chef role in a hotel from freestanding restaurant. Normally that might take you a, a bit longer in the West to do that. Yeah, and in general, we quite like living here. It's quite fun. But I think, you know, maybe in the future one day, I think like as a foreigner, you miss the things that you grew up with, you know, like the style of food, the ingredients and those kind of things. I think future, you know, one day I will definitely want to go home and live back in Australia.